W T H. What the hell? 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 This is the W T H. The W T H podcast. Hold on to your butt. Jason Casey. Jason Casey. Kareem Daniels. Kareem Daniels. And Nate Darling. Nate Darling. From the Darling New Media Studios, this is the WTH Podcast. Hey, before we actually went live with this show, I, I remembered this time to send it out to the world on Facebook. Send and not, it out. Not just me. Not just me. You oh. unlocked it. I unlocked it. Dope. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome, world. Everybody gets to listen now. <laughs> Coming up on the show today... Huh. We have small town news from Canada. What? Yep. They have towns there? Mm-hmm. Okay. They Are sure they in blackface? Uh, or brown face? Not on this one, no. No, not at all. Uh, speaking of brown faces, Kanye's in Wyoming. Okay. And uh, we've got uh, an asshole and a working mom in Florida Corner. <laughs> you didn't have to do an article about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm here in California. But before we get to all of that, uh, let's start with a little chit chat on the Friday show. What's uh, what's going on? Anything uh, anything interesting? And either of you want to just random bullshit? Random bullshit? Yeah. Going on? They had the uh, the UN. The, I guess it was the, the worldwide walkout for um, global warming. Oh, yeah. was that when when uh, Trump and Pence got mad at the UN and decided they didn't want to listen to any climate talk and walked out? No, this was on Friday. That was on Friday, but oh. yeah, but they yeah, but Trump and Pence did that today to the little girl <laughs> uh, that um, said, "Hey, you're fucking up my future." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a it's a worldwide phenomenon. I've seen her all over social media. Greta Van Sestren compared her to Children of the Corn. Greta Van Susteren can shut the fuck up. <laughs> hey, but I I'm I'm I cheered cheered this little kid this kid on and actually all of those because it, it is really our, it is their future. So. Right, right. If I'm <laughs> if I'm 15, you know, if I'm some if I'm like 12 to 15 years old and I'm looking at all of this shit and I'm going, hey, when I'm 26, the ocean levels are going to be really high and everything's fucked. Yeah, I'm going to be pissed. And it's not like it was when when we were twelve to fifteen, where every adult just went, "Shut up!" Yeah, you don't know anything. Yeah, because we re- we really didn't know, but now they fuck, they have access to everything, so they know. Well, the thing was though, when when we were that same age, and you know this, if you brought up anything, anything was like, "Hey, what about this? This is kind of bullshit." You'd be like, "Well, you don't know anything. You're a kid. You haven't you haven't seen you stuff. Haven't seen anything, yeah. You don't pay taxes, right? Yeah. You, you'll you'll understand when you're older." Yeah, there was a lot of that bullshit, and so that that's the interesting thing about uh, millennials and and younger people when they're like, "Well, millennials came out and they're they're saying all this shit. We never said this. I'm like, fuck you. I did. Yeah, it's just every adult was like, you you don't understand. You won't you'll know when you're let older. Don't correct uh-huh. adults." Oh, and there was yeah, and there was nowhere to put it out there to go. Hey, hey, what, what am I going to do? Write in to speak out? Uh, yeah, so, uh, one of my one of my friends who's a, who's a uh, she's an older woman um, posted this thing about this old woman in line, uh, like this whole like one of those th- those things that's too long. Don't read it, right? Uh, or right. don't read whatever TLDR. I, I uh, bet I bet no one will repost this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but basically, it was just like talking about how you know millennials and kids nowadays they have their their computers and their phones and they have all this stuff and they you know all these disposable stuff and all this stuff that's thrown away and shit like that um, and how that's it's all our fault like it's all it's all their you know it's all these kids fault it's 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 you know and I was like you guys fucking allowed this all to happen. Like under your watch, this is all your guys' watch, but it's all their fault. Like, yeah. like so, they're the ones that are control the but, corporations. Yeah. They're the ones that are that have made these decisions in the last like last forty years of how things were going well, and, it, and how consumerism is going to be run. So yeah, it's definitely their problem, and not the parents or the parents of those parents. 
well, that it's, it's everything like wrong. Trump, com- Trump complaining about the Chinese doing everything. Like the Chinese didn't do the shit. We did. The, well, American companies did the shit, right? Because they wanted to be. They wanted cheaper product. They wanted to make the they most. They had yeah. to respond to their to their fucking uh, to their fucking stockholders. You know, it, that's like somebody. Oh, somebody fucking put, said this shit about uh, about pharmaceutical companies and how horrible they are. And you know, and like they don't really want us to get better. I was like, fucking bitch. Here, listen to this. How about you listen to this? All right. First of all, like, if it wasn't for medications, I wouldn't be fucking alive right now from these pharmaceutical companies. So get the fuck off your horse. So they're not all evil. Uh, but second, what do you expect from like when when they're in a capitalist economy and that, that they they're, they're not answered? They don't have to answer to anybody when it comes to that shit. And they have they're they're getting the same type of attention to what they need as a citizen should get. You know, if not more, not more, more. They're getting, you know, they're, they're spending bill, millions of dollars. Uh, you, should, you should really read the Panama Papers. Oh, it might, it, d- might do, it, it might depress you. No, I, I know, I know what's going on with those because they're all shipping like the in the Purdue's, like right, right. Is it the, the, the Purdue's right? Is that the 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 that's opioid the, family? Yeah, that's yes. the opioid yeah, 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 um, yeah. Yeah, them shifting like millions of dollars like over like into other accounts because they're like, uh, we need to appear like we don't have as much money but, before they get I mean, fucking sued. It's fucking Walmart. Look yeah. at those. Look at so they have enough money to open up a medical facility, but they don't have enough money to pay their fucking uh, employees a living wage. Well, yeah. and the, the other part of that 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 is important to note, and Bernie Sanders has pointed this out multiple times, and he's not the only one. There are more people working at Walmart who are on food stamps than not. So you're paying your employees so little that they have to be on food stamps, yet you, as a corporation, are paying virtually nothing in taxes. Yeah. That's bullshit. And the corporations have taken all the jobs that require skill or people to do them and shipped them overseas. So, you know, the the, the big jobs that people can have are service industry fucking jobs. Yeah, but, but, it, but it's unskilled work, well, part so they don't deserve of, well, part anything. Of that's, part of that's true, part of that's not true, because a lot of that went to automation. Exactly. Well, that too, yes. And there are a bunch of those jobs that there are people that they need to fill jobs that actually go hand in hand with those, but they don't have enough people that have the skills to do it. So part of it is you got to be willing to move to get those skills. Because uh, there was there's one place in Mississippi where there used to be a chicken farm, a chicken factory, and uh, they call it like a triangle. And this guy came in and he set up like an, an electronics company there. Or uh, um, they do uh, uh, shit, uh, like mechanical engineering kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And those people went and they set up a community. Co- well, they had the local community college set up classes to train people there how to do those jobs. So you got somebody that was working in a tick factory five years ago that actually makes $100,000 a year do, running a, uh, and I, I can't, the word escapes me right now, but doing like a high tech job. Yeah. So, I mean, it's awesome. It's great. Yeah. So, uh, you gotta be willing to move to get to some of these newer things, but you also have to get companies that are willing to do this for people also. Like how many, how many companies are willing to do that? <laughs> like, well, you know, uh, uh, Obama set up uh, programs for, you know, the Republicans shit on him for it. Right. And then, and if you want to talk about like coal miners in places like Kentucky and oh, West yeah. Virginia, these jobs went away and most of them went away to automation, not to, oh, well, we're shutting, they're shutting down the mines. They're not shutting them down. They're, they're, you don't need 50 people. You need one machine. So the jobs are going away. And to give these incentives for retraining of people is important. But what happened was, like Kareem said, you had primarily Republicans coming out and saying, yeah, but these are our jobs, and my dad did this, and his dad before him. And it's like, yeah, and they died of black lung at 52. And I talked to... And those jobs don't exist anymore. Right, but I talked to Tim Wise, um, who's a... uh, He's a commentator on some of the television shows sometimes, but he's a professor. And he said that in in those states, there are a bunch of healthcare jobs available, but they don't, they won't do the retraining to do those jobs. Right. And that's that's the that's the challenge. 
They just need to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. Yeah, you need to go change somebody's diaper. <laughs> <laughs> you need to go change some adult diapers. That's what you need to do. Now, those bad. CNA jobs are, like, at least in California, not paid well at all. That's minimum wage work. Yeah, yeah. but if... If you're an RN in yeah. California, you can make really make good a money. Load of money. All right. So there's that, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't say, well, at least he's not going to reproduce. Headline man drowns during underwater marriage proposal. An American, it's sad, right? An American man has drowned while proposing to his girlfriend underwater on holiday in Tanzania. His name is Stephen Weber, and his girlfriend, uh, Kenesha Antoine, were staying in a submerged cabin at the Manta Resort off Pemba Island. Now, footage shows Mr. Weber diving underwater to ask Ms. Antoine to marry him. In the video, Mr. Weber presses a handwritten proposal note against the cabin window as Ms. Antoine films from inside. Now, she confirmed his death in a Facebook post saying he never emerged from those depths, end quote. The Manta Resort told the BBC that Mr. Weber tragically drowned while free diving alone outside the underwater room. It's with deepest regret we inform that a fatal accident occurred at the Manta Resort on September 19th. That's from a statement. The CEO said everyone is shaken to the core by Mr. Weber's death. Now, Mr. Weber and Miss Antoine had booked four nights in the resort's underwater room, which lies approximately uh, 820 feet from the shore. It's $1,700 a night. To stay there, the cabin is anchored in water around 32 feet deep. And on the third day of the stay, Mr. Weber, who's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, went into the water to make the proposal. Wearing a mask and fins, he held the note against the cabin glass as she watched from inside. His note read, and I quote, I can't hold my breath long enough to tell you everything I love about you, but everything I love about you, I love more every day. Later in the video, he turns over the sheet of paper to reveal the proposal before pulling an engagement ring from his shorts and swimming out of view. Now, the spokesperson told the BBC that his staff responded to a problem in the water, but when they arrived, absolutely nothing could be done. What is going on here? Is this an unfortunate accident or are people killing white guys in Tanzania? This is some white folks shit. Yeah, I've read actually about this place before because I like this sounds like it'd be so fucking cool. Nope. It doesn't <laughs> it does not sound like it would be cool to me. Yeah. So you have this guy, you have all these dumbasses doing selfies in places where you're not supposed to be at, uh on El Capitan, mm -hmm. over the ropes. You got motherfuckers holding women up by their heads off the side of cliffs to get what what do you go? You're, Man, you're, everybody's a photographer now, bro. All right, I can get that professional shot with my new iPhone 11, bro. Your great memory is now a fucking. It's it, it's not even a memory anymore. <laughs> I was I I had I had a beer sitting on the table. Jason almost grabbed for it. I was like, uh, how many years of sobriety <laughs> almost went out the window? <laughs> I would have ended up doing a spit take. That Sorry, was, that was a that was a real thing. That would have been live on Facebook. Good lord, this is it. So, See, look, even the thought of it made you want to drink. I'm telling you already, can't but, fucking handle it. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those one of those crazy things. That's, 30, it was thirty two feet. Thirty two feet down. Yeah, um, I guess that's where it, it is. Man, I mean, <laughs> well, he <laughs> swam. He swam away. So something happened there. Now, <sighs> clearly, he felt comfortable enough to go outside of the of the underwater thing to do that. I want to know what happened. Is this like one of those Dominican Republic situations where white people go to a place where white people don't generally live and then something bad happens? Well, somebody could have been mad because he was with a black woman. It's like, ah, oh, I'm going to get you. Uh, anything is possible, or it could have just been a poor, unfortunate accident. Aquaman was pissed. Aquaman was, in fact, pissed. All right, so that... <sighs> That was unfortunate, but again, you know, at least, you know, not reproducing. Um, dirty diapers, bare feet, tobacco spit, former flight attendant shares passenger horror stories. This is from the San Francisco Chronicle. Oh, man, fuck that woman right there. <laughs> uh <laughs> the photo Poor from dude, pa from, from passengershaming.com. Every flight attendant has stories. Now, what separate separates a retired flight attendant, Sean Kale Kathleen, though, is that she has pictures. Kathleen, who spent seven years flying in and out of SFO in Oakland for more than one domestic airline, is a tour de force 
behind pass- at Passenger Shaming, which is an Instagram account that showcases people on airplanes who've all but given up on being part of humanity. <laughs> People leave dirty diapers, soda bottles full of spit from chewing tobacco, underwear, banana peels. They let their kids put stickers all over the tray table and the window. It's like, I have two minutes to clean this off before the next set of passengers board. Great. A former police officer and paramedic, Kathleen has seen virtually everything in the not-always-so-friendly skies, but her biggest pet peeves are still some of the most common for frequent flyers. When you're boarding, there are 100 people behind you. Start unloading your luggage ahead of time. If you're going to need this sweater, get it out before you get to your seat. Have your stuff prepared before you get on. Have the things you need in an outside pocket. Then there's the guy who walks on the plane with their bag, and the first place they see that's empty, they put it there. Then they walk back to the 24th row. That's kind of messing it up for the whole rest of the plane. Now, obviously, there's room back there. You see all the empty bins, but people sitting up there now don't have the space to put their bag, their luggage. And even, and there's even the guy who will throw it in first class. Her Instagram account, which- well, that guy's a hero. Yeah. That guy's a hero, because <laughs> that's some balls. Uh, her Instagram account, which now has uh, almost a million followers, takes these pretty average annoyances to another level with myriad bare feet- Bare feet in the bulkhead. Uh, oh, that's just disgusting. And even a handful of people changing babies on seats. Uh, said, no, 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 99% of laboratories have a changing pa- changing table. Jason, would you change your baby on the seat? It depends on how long somebody's been in the bathroom. So, and But, I mean, most likely, yeah. So passenger we shaming. What's go- we're we're going to quickly look at a video here. Uh, oh, someone, there's a chick... Clipping her uh, looks like boyfriend's toenails. Man, get the fuck out of here! Clipping the toenails <laughs> on the flight. <laughs> that might be a kid's, but that's still no. Funny. That's a dude. That's what a full on dude. Well, no, no. But if you look at, it, there's no way it could be that guy's uh, leg. Yeah, I don't. I don't care. Uh, you video series. Yeah, here's oh, barefoot. Oh, man. Barefoot on a. Fold down table, and he's picking his toenail. Is one of them. We go through here. Oh, it's September 11th stuff, so there's some saluting. Uh, guy stood up whole six hours so his wife could sleep. Now that's love. No, that's a dude who's standing in the fucking aisle. Get out of the aisle, dude. Yeah, well, he fucked up. He cheated on his wife, and he <laughs> used to do all that type of shit. Uh, yeah, here, come, here comes the Mile High Club. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. Old lady waiting to use, <laughs> old white lady waiting to use the bathroom, and an African American couple comes rolling out. <laughs> what? Oh my God! Someone, someone has laid down underneath the seats near the aisle. <laughs> wow! <laughs> nice. Uh, let's one more video before we before we go forward. It's again. Oh, filing toenails. Filing Ooh. toenails. What is wrong with people? I mean, like, here's the thing. Like, I feel self-conscious because I wear my flip-flops a lot when I travel to places, if it's in the summertime or whatnot, because I'm a Californian. Uh-huh. Um, so I, it makes me feel shitty. because uh, I, I, But at the same time, I would never put my feet. Like, I keep them down when nobody can see them. Do you keep your flip-flops on? Yes. Okay, so you, then that's fine. But I might take them off and, like, you know, like have my feet out of them. But no, I'm not putting not them okay. on. No, not okay. I'm not putting them on any seats or any tables or. Nope, not okay. We don't want your fungus on our floors either. I don't have any fungus on my toes. Yeah, we don't know that. You're disgusting. (laughs) (laughs) Florida, land of enchantment (laughs) and crazy. This is Florida Corner. All right, before we go forward, if you want flip flops for your flight, go ahead and get them from Amazon. And if you do, Hit that Shop Amazon tab at the top of WTHpod.com. It helps support the show, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. So please, do, it, the, for, do it for us. Get them rainbows. Those are, the, those are the ones. Headline, accused serial flasher tells cops, I'm just an asshole. What can I say? <laughs> well, I mean. Wow. After, Change, a, go ahead. After being arrested, an accused serial flasher told Florida cops, I'm just an asshole. What can I say? Robert D. Giacomo, who's 69, was collared after he was spotted driving through the parking lot of a Target store 
near his Tampa area apartment. By the way, shop Target at the top of WTHpod.com. Have your stuff shipped to you so you don't see flashers. Giacomo was subsequently arrested in the parking lot of the adjacent Sam's Club. He was originally charged in May after multiple women reported he exposed himself and masturbated while in his vehicle outside various businesses. And when he failed to appear for a June court hearing, a judge issued an arrest warrant for him. In announcing his bust, the Pasco County Sheriff's Office noted that when the defendant was asked about the alleged incidents, he would only advise, I'm just an asshole, what can I say? Well, that asshole was booked into county jail where Bond was set at just over $2,500. What are you going to do, the jack him off? <laughs> the jack it off? The jack it off in the car? The jack him off I mean, you just need to re- replace the asshole with pervert. And... <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, it's... I see. Apt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, um, woman left daughter, who was three, in her car... Outside a strip club while she danced. That's what the cops are saying. Now, while the mother worked the pole inside, a three-year-old girl was roaming around the parking lot of a Florida strip club. Responding to a 911 call about an unsupervised child, police found the girl crying and confused alone outside the all-nude Vegas cabaret in Lauder Hill, which is in Broward County, at around 2 a.m. Now, the child had apparently been sleeping inside a Toyota Corolla that was not running and had a window cracked open for ventilation. In the rear of the car, cops reported were toys and a car seat. Around 2.30 a.m., uh, Manachika Daniels, who's 23, approached officers and identified herself as the child's mother. According to police, Daniels left her daughter unattended in the parking lot for about three hours. She was arrested on felony child neglect charge and booked into the county jail, where the Miami resident is locked up until she can post $5,000 bond. Her daughter reported to, reportedly was uh, appeared to be well, ta- well cared for and in good spirits as she and the officers waited for the arrival of child welfare workers who eventually took the girl into custody. Vegas Cabaret looks like it's in a strip mall. Strip club in a strip mall. Strip club in a strip mall. So that's Not a very uh, big strip club. Oh, either. man. Well, maybe, maybe it opens to a bigger strip club. Inside. I hope so. Yeah, so... <sighs> Can you imagine leaving your three-year-old? And I mean, sure, kids go off to sleep, but uh, well, yeah, she normally sleeps you know, four or five hours. And what are we gonna do? It just makes me sad on multiple levels. Like, you know, feel bad for the kid. Like, the mom had. I I hope the mom can't like just didn't have enough money and had to work. You know, you know. I mean, but I don't know, man. It's just. So, so many sides of it that I, I've, I hope for, <laughs> <laughs> I hope for, I don't want to just think that like the, that she's like a horrible mom and like, there was this know. huge hog in front of me. <laughs> Beta male. Sorry. <laughs> just saying, like, I don't want to think that she's just a horrible person. Cause like, that's immediately what I think. Yeah. <laughs> She left her kid alone in the car I know, for man. three hours in the middle of the night in a strip club parking, parking lot. lot. I know. I Do you know. know who goes to a strip club from midnight Horrible to 3 a.m.? Horrible people. Yes. Not necessarily pedophiles, right. but you don't want a three-year-old hanging around in a parking lot at the strip club. No. Just saying. Man. Just so much could have been, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, Kanye West is... Uh, said a big hello to Wyoming with a public Sunday service blowout. Yeehaw! Uh, he wanted his presence in Wyoming to be known far and wide, and it looks like he's hosting a mega Sunday service, and he invited all the town folk and their mom. The uh, service taking place at the Pow Wow Garden of the Buffalo Bill Center in the west of Cody, Wyoming, where Kanye now owns a massive waterfront property <laughs> named Monster Lake Ranch. Per local reports, the sign now reads West Lake. Uh, we already know that Kim and uh, he have made themselves at home getting acquainted with the local wildlife um, where they uh, allegedly were chasing around pronghorn antelope on, on ATVs. Uh, now, according to the venue's Facebook post about the big, big event, Kanye bringing out an 80-person choral group for the performance. Preparations underway for the free and public event, and it looks like they're expecting quite a turnout. Photos obtained by TMZ show a bunch of tents set up 
ahead of his Sunday service with catering and special events trucks in tow. I've not been to Wyoming, but I have to imagine that that's something. I've, I've been to Cody. I've been to Wyoming. It's not shit there. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, Cody White, like the, the place where you work is Walmart. Like that's where the majority of people work. That's almost everywhere in Wyoming. Yeah. That's not an oil field. But but yeah, Cody White, I've, I've, I've been there, man. military base. I've been there. So that's, that's, uh, that's, that's Kanye making himself at home um, with, <laughs> with his new. I mean, it's a beautiful country. There's just nothing going on there. Yeah. Other than, you know. Con- yeah. Kanye and Buffalo. It's probably not fair to call it like it was probably it, it wasn't it, he probably bought it and it was called Monster Lake Ranch. He probably didn't name it Monster Lake Ranch. No, Maybe. he called it Lake West. Yeah. Or West yeah, Lake. West Lake, right? Yeah. West Lake. Uh, he, he did make it a Forbes the uh, highest paid hip hop artist of last year, so. Oh, well good for him. Yeah. Thank I mean, God. He, he had to burn it money somewhere. I was <laughs> I was really worried that Kanye wasn't uh wasn't doing okay. Well, they're buying all the, the, the property where it's definitely landlocked and won't be affected so much by <laughs> global warming. That's what all those rich people are doing right now. Well, sure. If he, if he heads on up there, then he doesn't have to worry about the ocean level rising. Yeah. Lean back, relax, and enjoy Sex Toy News. Oh, this one's a little different. Um... Argentina police arrest a gang accused of smuggling cocaine and plastic penises. Oh. Wow. <laughs> That's right. They've arrested members of a gang of drug dealers that have been accused of smuggling cocaine inside of, well, plastic penises or sex toys. The cocaine-loaded members, the kind found in the costume adornments at party shops, were sold by dealers operating in the red light district of City of La Plata, about 36 miles south of Argentina's capital of Buenos Aires. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they Damn. put out photos of the dongs. I used to have one that looked like that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> a video showing 10 of the phallic containers was released by police following the bust of a home of a Peruvian couple alleged to have led the organization. Now, police say they seized more than a kilo of cocaine, half a kilo of marijuana, and cocaine-loaded penises at the home of the couple who managed a Peruvian restaurant called Little Corner of Peruvian Flavor. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Got that Mm. nice Peruvian. (laughs) The gang's alleged leader was already serving time under house arrests at the moment of the raid. Now, according to investigators, hours of telephone intercepts revealed the gang and its clients used special codes for their phone transactions. A grandmother represented 10 grams of cocaine while a baby was five. Send three grandmothers to my house, one client was overheard saying. Three grandmothers and two babies, replied the dealer. Police led seven raids into uh, the districts in which five men and three women were arrested. The investigation into the gang began back in January, including undercover agents, 400 hours of taped phone calls. Hey, how much stupider can fucking people get when, like, when you start saying things like, uh, send, two, send three grandmothers and two babies over? Like, they know you're not talking about fucking grandmas now. Your code fucking is broken. <laughs> three grandmothers. You, you have to have, you know, uh, three different grandmothers' names, uh, and each one represents a different, you know, like, amount. Sure. You know, and, and then babies, you, like, some specific baby names. You put a lot of thought into this. I'm just, in just a minute that I heard the story, I thought of a better fucking system. That's back when he used to deal cocaine in. Oh, okay. When he used to get it from the cartel in San uh, Diego. Uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually up in Chico and I was doing an MDMA. You know how it rolls. <laughs> All right. Some of that Mac Drake. All right. So we're going to wrap this show up in a timely manner with this. Let's Aww. leave the hustle and bustle for small town news. All right. We go now to uh, the Newport Dispatch from Newport, Vermont. Uh, headline Border Humorist Ross Murray releases new collection, A Jerk in Progress. Nice. Uh, That's what she said. <laughs> From Stansted, Quebec, Eastern Townships writer Ross Murray will release his third collection of humor, A Jerk in Progress, at Black Cat Books in Lennoxville. Uh, that was back in, on September 15th. Subtitled Various Nonsense, the collection features more than 80 columns and essays that originally appeared in the Sherbrooke Record and Life in Quebec magazine, as well as in audio form on CBC Radio's afternoon program, 
Breakaway. Oh, so a bunch of new material. And the book can be purchased on Amazon. Make sure you uh, go ahead and click through the Shop Amazon tab at WTHpod.com. It's, the book is split into two sections. From the makers of Rick to Saul, which contains satire and whimsy covering everything, from public service announcements to Bethlehem's Three Kings at the shopping mall, and contains minimum two dead mice, which offers up two episodes from the author's life. Now, Ross Murray has written a weekly column for the Sherbrooke Record for over 15 years, and prior to that in the Stansted Journal. He's also been a regular contributor to CBC Radio, McSweeney's Internet, Tendencies, and other publications. And in addition to his two previous collections, Murray published his debut novel, A Hole in the Ground, in 2016, and in May of this year directed his original play, All Together Now, based on a local legend about how former Beatles almost met at the Haskell Free Library. Ah, damn. Uh, The launch at Black Cat Books was free and open to the public. Murray will also be at the Township's Expressions Table at the Townshippers Festival uh, in Cowansville. That was back on September 21st. Uh, And uh, at the Township's Authors Roundtable on October 19th. So there is something coming up. I see. Mm Mm-hmm. You can also sample his writing at his website, Drinking Tips for Teens at rossmurray1.wordpress.com. <laughs> McSweeney's has some pretty funny uh, sat- satirical articles if Look, you've ever been there. I'm not saying that he's not funny. I'm just saying it's a small town uh, it's a small town news story. <laughs> he has a post from September 19th, The Loneliness of the Bouncy Castle Monitor. <laughs> Yeah, that guy has... A, That's pretty long. It's a, uh, Adventures of in Self-Publishing, Jerk Edition. Oh, that's what she said. There's another one. So your roommate is feasting on your soul. Is another, <laughs> is another one. Feel feel free to read those uh, at uh, rossmurray, the number one, dot wordpress, dot com to check that out. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of the WTH Podcast. Thanks for tuning, tuning us. Thanks for tuning us. Tuning us in. You're tuning us in. You're watching on Facebook Live or later on in the day, or if you're downloading us on any of your favorite uh, podcasting sources, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify. Whatever your podcatcher is. Spotify. Whatever you might do it. That's good. Just do it. All right. Have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, back on Monday with our grievances and more, and maybe this is the weekend the Steelers break into the win column. Let's see. I would almost put money on it if I did that sort of thing. Uh, and just to be clear, the, the bet is four or less. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so they go Owen, you know. Yeah, well, I think they're going to win this week. Yeah. I mean, they're hosting Cleveland if they can't win, or Cincinnati. Yep. If they can't, if they can't beat Cincinnati at home. Four, four is four is a high number then. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Well, allow me to retort.